Okay, so mucor polysaccharide disease type 1 um, is uh, one of the lysosomal storage diseases. Um, it's subdivided into three categories. Um, so there are uh, three categories depending on severity. Um, there's Hurler disease, which is the most severe form, um, uh, Hurler Shea, which is an intermediate form, and Shea disease, which is a more attenuated form of the disease. Um, between them, they're all caused by the same uh, gene defect um, in, a, in an enzyme called alpha l -Girondidase. This breaks down long chain sugars in uh, a part of the cell called the lysosome. And I guess that the work that we wanted to, uh, to talk about um, at World was really to try and see if we could find a, a functional link between you know, the gene that causes this disease and the manifestations that we actually see in patients. So patients with Hurler disease have um, severe uh, bone and joint disease. Mm -hmm. They often have, often have facial, facial dysmorphology. Um, so they, they have enlarged bones in the face large bones in the body, they often have shortened stature. They also, uh, in, in the more severe forms of the disease, in Hurler disease particularly, um, have a, a very progressive neurodegeneration. Um, they have a, a very rapid disease onset and, and progression in Hurler disease, um, and death can be in the first few years of life. In Hurler Shea, um, there's still a, a, a mental degeneration over time, um, but it's more attenuated and it happens more slowly. And in Shea disease, there's not so much um, uh, brain involvement at all, but a lot of the problems that these patients have are with bone and joint disease, later on with um, respiratory insufficiency and cardiac problems as well as with the heart. So um, we have a mouse model of Hurler syndrome, uh, which was uh, developed a long time ago. Um, they're all based on uh, the same um, lack of the alpha L gene. Um, and this mouse model uh, recapitulates many of the symptoms that we see in patients. So the, the mice actually have enlarged uh, bones, they have, they have thickened skin as well. Um, and a lot of this appears to be due to a buildup of heparin sulfate. And we wanted to see if we can actually try and tease out some of the um, events that were happening between the, the uh, lack of this enzyme and downstream um, uh, neurodegenerative and bone and joint problems. And we wanted to do it in the context of, of some of the treatments that patients receive. So patients with uh, Hurler disease often have two options. Um, the first option is enzyme replacement therapy. This is a, um, a, a, based on the concept that um, this alpha l gironidase enzyme can be uh, delivered back into cells, um, it can be delivered into the bloodstream, it can be taken up by cells um, uh, via uh, minus 6-phosphate receptors, and it can actually cross-correct um, the uh, uh, disease in the lysosomes of the cells. The problem with enzyme replacement therapy is that it's unable to cross the blood-brain barrier, and therefore it doesn't have much effect in the brain. So in more attenuated disease, enzyme replacement therapy can be very effective. But in the more severe forms of disease, such as HERLA, enzyme replacement therapy is much less effective. Another option is bone marrow transplant. In bone marrow transplant, um, we deliver uh, 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 cells from uh, um, another individual, bone marrow cells. Uh, they're delivered to a patient who's received chemotherapy treatment. And these cells are able to repopulate the entire blood system of the uh, individual who's receiving the transplant. In itself, that wouldn't be enough because you would just have enzyme around the peripheral blood um, and around the periphery of the, of the person. But some of these cells are able to traffic into the brain and release enzyme. And in Hurler disease, this is actually quite an effective treatment. And we think that this works well because um, there's quite a lot of um, alpha l secreted from these cells. So it's it's sent out from the cells into the bloodstream. And if they're resident in the brain, it's sent out within the brain, and therefore it can be taken up by affected neurons. So we wanted to investigate how um, heparin sulfate might affect uh, bone marrow transplant. And what we found was that um, heparin sulfate actually has a really significant effect on the ability of a bone marrow transplant to engraft properly. So in the mouse model, we were able to show that 
um, an excess of heparin sulfate and an excess of, um, of a very specific sulfation pattern of heparin sulfate actually led to a decrease in um, uh, cell migration after a bone marrow transplant and cell engraftment. And we think that this is partly one of the reasons why um, patients have had problems in the past with um, uh, not accepting transplant grafts. Um, and traditionally this, is, this has been linked to a reduced intensity conditioning protocol where they've received a, a reduced intensity of chemotherapy conditioning. Um, this was known to be a risk factor in these patients, but it wasn't known why.